evening, it's 6.30 p.m. and time for you to know all that happened in South India today with me, T.S. Sudhir on Up South. Our top story this Tuesday evening is from Tamil Nadu on what is being termed the death of a writer. Haunted by Hindutva and caste groups, writer Pirmal Murugan, whose latest novels, Madhuru Bagan, was kicking up a storm and was under a severe attack, has announced his decision to give up writing altogether and withdraw all his books. Murgan, an author of seven novels and several short stories, posted on his Facebook account, and I quote, Pirmal Murgan, the writer, is dead. As he is no god, he is not going to resurrect himself. He also has no faith in rebirth. An ordinary teacher, he will live as P. Murgan. Leave him alone. Reports say he was forced to take this extreme step after, the go after going through agonizing moments at the peace meeting held at Namakal in Tamil Nadu. He also urged his publishers not to sell his novels, short stories and other creative works and offered to pay the production cost and compensation for all the unsold books. Joining me now to discuss this on Up South is Kannan Sundaram, the publisher of uh, Pirmal Murugan's book from Chennai, also political analyst M.R. Venkateshan and journalist and author Gauri Lankesh joins me from Bengaluru. Mr. Sundaram, if I may come to you first, what do you plan to do now, now that Pirmal Murugan has said that he wants to withdraw all his books? Is it impossible to make Murugan change his mind? As a publisher and as a as a person of Tamil Nadu literature, I am very deeply disturbed by what happened around Murugan's Madhurbhagan novel. I think it's very unfor unfortunate. It's a very serious challenge to artistic freedom and freedom of expression in the state. I think the government failed to protect the writer's right to expression. And uh, they connived with the casteist and fundamentalist forces to break his resolve down and made him sign on the dotted line. Uh, I'm not sure what Bhujan is planning for the future. As a publisher, I'll stand by him. Right. Uh, Gauri Lankesh, the publisher, Kannan Sundaram's there saying that he was forced to sign on the dotted line. Obviously, the pressure mounted on Pirmal Murgan was so much that he decided to give up writing altogether. I increasingly feel that, you know, we are living in a lunatic asylum. This country is seeing all kinds of fanaticism on the rise and that's the reason why I think someone like Perumal, who is highly respected in Tamil Nadu as a writer, that he has been forced to say that he's no, gonna, no, no longer going to write anymore. And uh, I think it's no coincidence that, you know, BJP is trying to find a foothold in Tamil Nadu. And though this book was published more than four years ago, that now, you know, the objections being raised to the book. I think I clearly see uh, uh, Hindu fanaticism, uh, fanaticism organizations behind this move. Right. Uh, I have been uh, reading Mr. Venkatesh's reactions on the social media coming to this decision taken by Permal Murugan. Some of the phrases used are murder most foul, voice silenced. You think the right-wing groups and the different caste groups have got blood on their hands? No, the, I won't say right-wing or left-wing. The social media has consists of uh, quite a few characters across. It's a rainbow out there. So first and foremost, you have to understand that uh, uh, freedom of expression is granted in the Constitution, in Article 19. But at the same time, the Constitution says there is a reasonable restriction. I think you cannot uh, bastardize a whole community or bitch a whole village. So you, you have to have your own limitations and this society is on a short fuse. So you have to also, you have to be a citizen first, you must understand the responsibilities governing you as a citizen before you are an artist. So within that domain you can definitely express yourself. But this type of painting, the whole village or whole community, is uh, perhaps the society has not matured enough to accept this in totality. Uh, Gauri Lankesh, uh Mr. Venkateshan, they are making a very important point that freedom of expression also comes with certain responsibilities as a writer. But in this particular case, would you say Perumal Murugan should kind of succumb to this kind of pressure and give up writing altogether? Certainly not. I don't think he should uh, give up writing. I mean, he has, won, he has been uh, considered a chronicler of the uh, one particular uh, region uh, of Tamil Nadu and its culture and its history and all that. And he should def definitely be, uh, I, I like the fact that all Tamil writers have supported him and I think all uh, writers across India should also stand by Mr. Perumal right now. Right. Uh, Mr. Venkateshan, of course, uh, last week we saw what happened in Paris where uh, 
12 journalists and cartoonists uh, in France were gunned down by terrorists. Now, how justified it is to mourn for the journalists and cartoonists who died in Paris and do pretty much the same thing here and then justify it by saying that freedom of expression comes with certain fetters? I think uh, we are getting mixing up issues. The France people were killed. Here the author on his own volition has withdrawn and says he won't write. And tomorrow for all that you know he may come back and write. So I, I don't think so that uh, this is, he's, he's also in an emotional state of turbulence. So at this point in time to, uh, you know, comment upon his particular reaction is, I, in my opinion, em emotionally imprudent. So I would rather wait, uh, settle, let the death settle. And I think nobody has stopped him from writing. And whereas in, in, in France, people assassinated those cartoonists. Here he has a very much a right to uh, go back to his artistic freedom. But there is a limit. Your freedom stops where my nose begins. Right. Uh, Kamil Sundaram, last word to you. This is not just about commercial laws. It's also about freedom of expression. Do you see this as a, some kind of a wake-up call for you as a publisher that you will be more careful in the future about not crossing the line? I am a publisher of serious literary fiction and non-fiction and it is always about crossing the line. I do not believe I will indulge in any censorship of my writer's work. I will stand by them for the right of expression. The people who broke down Murugan's resolve have already declared that this is the beginning and this is not the end. And I think we should all be ready to face what comes in the future. Right, uh, Mr. Kannan Sundaram, Mr. Venkateshan and Gauri Lankesh, thanks a lot for joining us on Up South with your perspective on this extremely disturbing story this Tuesday evening. News now from Karnataka. Is there trouble brewing for Chief Minister Siddharamaya? Because his own revenue minister, Srinivas Prasad, has mooted the idea of having a Dalit Chief Minister for Karnataka. Let's listen in to what Srinivas Prasad had to say. Let's try to understand what actually is happening within the Congress camp. Joining me now is political analyst Hemant Kumar from Bengaluru. Mr. Hemant Kumar, what exactly is cooking in the Congress kitchen? Is Srinivas Prasad in some way testing waters vis-a-vis -vis the Chief Minister of Karnataka? Uh, see, there has been a demand for, um, for a <laughs> Dalit CM in Karnataka. Uh, suddenly it has sprung up now. Uh, the, the KPCC president, Dr. Parmeshwar, he could not become chief minister, so though, though he was, he lost elections, though he was a party president. Now he was, he is hankering for the, at least for the post of deputy CM. Now it, it looks like that uh, his supporters are uh, now clamoring for a Dalit CM. And in this background, Srinivas Prasad being a Dalit from Mysore and holding a, a powerful portfolio of revenue, if he doesn't jo doesn't join the chorus, then he'll be seen as betraying the Dalit interest. So he has also made a statement saying that nothing nothing wrong with the uh, with the, with the Dalit CM. It looks like that it is a it is right. a orchestrated campaign within the Congress party in favour of Parmeshwar. Ask for Dalit CM, and, and uh, at least we will get a deputy CM. As you have, as we as, as we all know that he has been hankering for some power right from beginning day one. So, would you say, Mr. Hemant Kumar, that Chief Minister Sidharamaya has reason to worry? Sidharamaya is a very, very clever and pragmatic politician. He cannot speak against Dalits at all. So, he has said nothing wrong in, in, in Dalit, Dalit becoming Chief Minister. He has also made a statement to that effect. But he also knows that it is not possible unless and until the Congress Party High Command uh, uh, selects a Dalit as CM. So, as of now, since Congress Party High Command is itself is uh, seized off from many issues, organizational issues following this uh, electoral defeat, he may be pretty well knows that it is not going to happen. But why should he be seen as being an anti So he said nothing wrong in being, that being a CM. It is a very clever and uh, uh, politically clever move on the part of Sidharamaya. Right, Mr. Hemant Kumar, thanks a lot for joining us on Up South and decoding these clever political moves being made by the Revenue Minister of Karnataka for us. Thanks a lot for joining us. Now, a corruption-free Telangana is only a phone call away, or so Chief Minister of Telangana, K. Chandrasekhar Rao, would want the state's people like to believe. K. Chandrasekhar Rao does not mind having blood on his hands. In the line of fire is any government official who demands a bribe in Telangana. 
So KCR has come up with a solution asking people to dial M for murder of corruption. In the last 48 hours, over 3,300 people have called up. Once a caller calls the anti graft helpline, the call goes to the state secretariat and is then transferred to call center. The complaint is then forwarded to the concerned department. An SMS is then sent to the complainant regarding the status. Actually, it hits the secretariat number, then the call will be diverted to this center and we will be able to take the call. While taking the call, we got a very good uh, CRM page wherein we will be able to type all the details of the individual while answering the call and we will also be able to tell him which is the department. Uh, uh, which would be solving the problem and we will uh, record the whole call and then uh, uh, we are in the process of uh, sending these uh, grievances or the complaints to the concerned departments as such. If the flood of calls to the helpline number is anything to go by, Telangana's biggest problem is a corrupt and unresponsive administration. KCR is selling the hope that help is just a phone call away. With Ratnika Sharma in Hyderabad Bureau Report, headlines today. Welcome back. You're with Up South. A 16-year-old physically challenged girl has allegedly been gang raped by four men in Tamil Nadu's Krishnagiri district. According to the girl's parents who traveled to Chennai for, uh, for help, the girl was working in the farm when four men tied up her hands and allegedly gang raped her. The next morning, when they went to the police station to lodge a complaint, they refused to file an FIR. My colleague Shisha Reddy spoke to the parents of the girl in Chennai. It is a very shocking incident what has happened in Tamil Nadu's Krishnagiri district where uh, the 16-year-old girl, uh, deaf and dumb girl, have been uh, allegedly raped by uh, four men in her own district. Uh, the family members have finally, uh, you know, knocked the steps of uh, this activist here, you know, because enough steps were not being taken uh, in order to bring justice. Uh, uh, you know, yenna nadandu this rani kanga. Sapar Kurtotenko, Kolekon and the Sapar Kurto, Warapo, and the Odyssey or Tola Kedithi or the Portanga. Port Pinala on the Yuma, one the Kerta Pulla Yang and Porto, Urke or La, Yulinara, say, our Munik Mariah, say, Yea or Lan Kerta. Other one the Marikaranga. So he, he is pointing out that uh, you know she was uh, allegedly raped, uh, but however uh, they have not taken uh, this into consideration, and they, they have only been uh, uh, constantly saying that it's just a physical uh, assault on her and, and, and nothing else uh, on that matter. Ma'am, they have come to you know your place right now, and uh, you know what exactly is this case all about? Because uh, we we have been hearing about what these parents have been saying us. Minor girl, speech and hearing impaired. Uh, she was gang raped. This is the incident. But FAR was filed after seven days and the medical examination was not conducted uh, as per the norms of uh, POXO. Sign language interpreter was not used at various uh, levels. So I find the total uh, apathy and insensitivity among the officials over there. So even after so many incidents that have been reported in the past, you know, nothing seemed to be happening concrete on ground. Does it disappoint you? Uh, definitely it disappoints us because only after a lot of struggles all these statutory commissions are uh, being, uh, uh, I mean they are coming up for example Women's Commission and the SCPCR and Human Rights Commission and we have a, a department for uh, differently abled and child welfare committees are there. We have so many agencies but even then a poor family has to come to Chennai to seek justice. Right, so this is a very sad case what has happened in Krishnagiri district, Sudhir, because the parents have come here, they have been, uh, you know, explaining and finally knocked the doors of the media, in fact, uh, for some sort of justice, because if it had happened in other places, uh, you know, even uh, they have been talking about how th these kind of cases have been dealt in other parts of the country in a different way, and because they are farm labourers, uh, you know, the case has been completely neglected is what uh, they have been telling us.